Welcome to the next Moto Champion Talk Show brought to you by Bridgestone. It's time for the news. Starting with MotoGP, MotoGP will be back in action this weekend at Mugello, where hometown hero Valentino Rossi hopes to be front and center for the weekend. After a difficult race at Le Mans, the Italian hopes to regain the points lead after crashing out of the final lap at the last race. His teammate Maverick Vinales ultimately took the win and the points lead, but that could all change once again at Mugello. Let's take a look at your point standings as they head into the race. On to World Superbike. It was an emotional weekend for the entire paddock to say the least after suffering the devastating loss of American Nikki Hayden just last week. However, racing did go on and the weekend was undeniably dedicated to the Kentucky Kid. Donington Park hosted a moment of silence and racers alike dedicated their respective races and wins to Nikki as well. In World Superbike Race 1, Tom Sykes took his ninth race win at Donington in a row. But Jonathan Ray notched Kawasaki's official 100th win of World Superbike when he won race two. He said it had been a challenging weekend, but dedicated his win to Nikki. In World Supersport, Keenan Sofaglu took pole position and the win, while American PJ Jacobson suffered an unfortunate mechanical issue that caused him to retire early from the race. He too made this race weekend one for Nikki. Let's take a look at your top five in the point standings after Donington Park. <laughs> Moto America will resume racing this weekend at Road America. And just to refresh your memory, let's take a look at the complete point standings heading into your weekend. And last but certainly not least, American Flat Track had its first of two doubleheader weekends at Springfield. The TT on Saturday ended in victory for Moto America's Hayden Gillum in the singles class. From the fastest lap time in qualifying to winning his heat, dominating his semi, and eventually taking the checkered flag, Hayden went on to take the win and dedicated it to Nikki and his late brother Ethan, saying, Team 95, this one is for my little brother, and it's for Nikki too. This is for the team. Congratulations, Hayden. Jesse Janish went on to take second, while Colby Carlisle, AKA Flying Tomato, took third and the singles points lead. So for this week's show, we have your AFT singles points leader, Colby, on to talk about leading the points for the first time in his career. In the Twins class, Brian Smith pulled off his third successive mile victory aboard his number one Indian motorcycle. The victory was the defending Grand National Champion's fourth race win in a row overall, making him just the fifth rider in the series history to accomplish that. Congrats, Brian. So let's take a look at your AFT point standings. <laughs> And that's your dirt. We don't have a product spotlight for you this week because here at NMC we wanted to take this week to honor Nikki Hayden. We all no doubt suffered a tremendous loss this past week, all in our own way. For me personally, Nikki has been a friend for most of my racing career, along with the entire family and extended Owensboro crew. I've been honored, privileged enough to have a host of memories with them all, and for that I'm forever grateful. Here at Next Moto Champion, we were lucky enough to have Nikki's support personally and professionally, and John Boucher has a little something to share with you about his professional and personal experience with Nikki. But first, a quick commercial break.
son Brad started racing pocket bikes when he was seven years old. The first bike he ever had was a Honda Repsol Nicky Hayden replica because Brad, like most racers, wanted to grow up to be Nicky Hayden. Guys like Colin Edwards and Nicky Hayden showed us that it could be done. They showed us that if you wanted it bad enough, you could be anything you wanted to be. A two-time world champion in Colin Edwards and a MotoGP world champion in Nicky Hayden. As Next Moto Champion grew over the years, it led us down a number of different paths. And one of those paths led us to Earl and Nicky Hayden. Whether it was helping us get in the flat track or timing laps around the track in Earl's backyard, Earl and Nicky were all about supporting the sport and the athletes who competed in it. At some point, I approached Nicky about the idea to shoot a pilot episode of the Next Moto Champion TV show for CBS Sports. Here was a guy whose schedule was booked out two months in advance. Every week or every other week, he was in a different part of the world. He's racing, he's training, he's spending time with family when he can. He had all the money and fame that he could have ever dreamed of. And instead of saying that his card was full, which it actually was, Nicky carved out some time to focus on growing the sport of motorcycle racing. Nicky Hayden appreciated and recognized what the sport of motorcycle racing did for him. Instead of riding off into the sunset, he looked for ways to help grow the sport and support the athletes who wanted to follow in his footsteps. And he did it all with a great attitude and a smile. So from 2013, with the help of Brad Jones and Garrett Gerloff, here's a look at one of the best days and memories that I'll ever have. This is the pilot episode of Next Moto Champion, hosted by Nikki Hayden. Hi, I'm Nikki Hayden, the 2006 MotoGP World Champion. But this is the man of the day. This is the man of the season. This is Nikki Hayden. Everywhere I go, I get the question, is America got another champion in line? We're about to set out on the new show to find America's next Moto Champion. We're gonna go deeper than just following these guys around the track. We're really gonna get to know them inside and out and find out what they're really like away from the races. Garrett, you ever had to try to catch a horse? I think this one's ready for the derby. <laughs> this one makes champions right here. Yeah. Garrett wasn't much help with the horse. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I don't do that, that's not me. <laughs> I can rope a, you know, iron horse, but... <laughs> I just want to ride the best bikes in the world. I think I, I want to see how far I can push myself, and uh, right now that's in MotoGP. Garrett's got a lot of potential. I mean, we, we've seen his first AMA race right out of the gate. He did awesome. For Garrett Gerloff, he'll take the final one of the year in Supersport. You know, an honor and then uh, to come and see the compound and ride bikes and it was awesome. I, I you know, could have asked for more. Man, cool dude. Thanks for having me out today. This has been awesome. Yeah, just no words. All right, great. I'm glad you came out. Glad you enjoyed it and definitely had a good time getting to know you and hearing your story. So I will be watching and I'll be checking those results this summer so I don't want to have to scroll down too far. Yeah, I know. You shouldn't have to worry about that. I'm All right. Working hard, so yeah, thanks a lot, man. Gas it up. See you down the road. Cool. See you later. Garrett Gerloff just might be the next Moto champion. All right, we'll be right back with our guest, the Flying Tomato, Colby Carlisle. Woodcraft-CFM.com is your made-in-the-USA aftermarket parts specialist when it comes to rear sets, clip-ons, sliders, engine covers, and more. Woodcraft is the exclusive distributor of brands like Armor Bodies, Cycle Mount, and new for 2016, Hindle Exhaust, a combination of power, quality, and value that you won't find anywhere else. Find them all at Woodcraft-CFM.com. And we're back, and this interview is brought to you by TAW Performance. 
He's finished consistently in the top five and no worse than seventh this season, including a third place finish this past weekend at the Springfield TT. Thanks to his consistency, he's taken over the points lead in American Flat Track singles class for the first time in his career. And for the first time, we'd like to welcome to the talk show the number 36, the Flying Tomato, Colby Carlisle. Colby, welcome to the show. Thanks, Danielle. It's great to be here today to talk to you guys. Great to have you. We've been watching you all season, just waiting for that perfect opportunity to get you on. So we're happy to have you here. So let's start with the big news for you, taking over the points lead, like I said, for the first time in your career. Congratulations. Talk about your weekend. Yeah, that was sweet. You know, I kind of knew all day that um, Shayna might struggle a little bit on the TT, and if she didn't make the main, I had to finish no worse than third to be able to take over the points lead. So. That was kind of the goal all day. You know, I uh, sat qualified second in the first session and then I think fifth in the second one, but I knew I was quick and just nice and consistent in the heat race, finished second there, second in the semi, and then the main, I just slowly just took off, got a second over the jump, and Jesse Janish put a wheel in, but I knew he wasn't in the points at all, so I kind of didn't want to battle too much with him. If it was someone else, I would have gone for it, but we'll just let him go by a little bit, and then me, Hayden, and Jesse just kind of slowly just finished the race nice and easy. Right, Hayden had an excellent weekend, obviously, and your strategy paid off for you. But let's talk about the lead. It's narrow, to say the least. It's one point over Shayna at this point. So how do you plan to keep the lead moving forward going into a race weekend that you know nothing about? Um, yeah, the things have gone, been going a little bit not quite what I wanted at Arizona and Sacramento. You know, we finished top five, which was good, but we learned a lot there about me, my bike, and the team, and we both use that now and in the going into the red mile we're changing strategies a little bit which is definitely going to help me and where it's going to help the team a little bit be more prepared for the weekend we've got a good plan going into the red mile and i feel really good uh, i got the point lead by one and i don't think they're going to run away with it this time i'm sticking in that lead draft so can you elaborate a little bit on the plan without giving away too much detail um no, I don't want to talk about it too much, but, you know, coming in with the new team, they kind of always did one thing, and I always kind of did another thing. It's just my riding style, so we decided, you know, we're going to go with what I like and what I feel comfortable with compared to, uh, at, at Sacramento, we were doing something I, I was trying to learn, and that was kind of, it was, my mind wasn't quite where it needed to be during the race. I was trying to focus on what I was trying to learn, and this weekend, we're going with what I know. Well, and that's an understandable hindrance when you're trying to apply something in, in a race weekend. So you just mentioned your new team and your new sponsor. You've been waiting three rounds to thank them. So let's talk about that. That's obviously a big deal for your season. And there was a turning point back in April where you joined a new team. So talk about the new deal. Yeah, you know, I've uh, kind of been trying to talk to Craig and the team for a few years, just get my foot in the door. And after Charlotte, we kind of called each other and it worked out and they wanted to jump on board. They believed in me and they believed I could bring home some race wins and possibly the championship at the end of the year. And that's what I knew. That's what I knew I had to do. You know, there's a lot of pressure joining with that team. They've won championships for, I think, the past three years or something. I don't, I don't know, too many. <laughs> but uh, so I go, joined in. I knew if I could handle, I knew I could handle the pressure. So I believed in myself and I went for it, you know. The team's great. They've got so much knowledge and they're just 100% committed to being successful with me and everything. And that means a lot to me. They come to every race and they work super hard. They know what they're doing and I'm working super hard. So it's a good, it's a good mesh together with the two of us. Well, they obviously believe in you. And you said at one point when you announced the news of being with the new team that this was the part of the program that you needed. What part of the program was that? Um, the knowledge, really, you know, those guys are just smart. I, I physically and everything, I've got that side down with Team 95. You know, we train a lot in Kentucky here, but they've got the great bikes and they've got knowledge. You know, my, my dad, he doesn't, he, he didn't grow up racing. You know, we kind of just jumped into it, the two of us. So kind of, I knew what to do and I told him what to do. And that wasn't, you know, you kind of need someone else to be able to say, hey, we're doing this to the bike. I see what it's doing. We're going to change that. And, that's what the team does, you know. They've got they can they've got the knowledge and they see what's going on and they just do it. And that's what I love. I like that a lot. But you've had Ryan Wells in your corner, so that had to be helpful up to this point. Yeah, you know, Ryan, he's one of my best friends and he wrote for the team last year, so I can kind of always go to him and talk to him and see what he thinks I should do and what they should do and 
that works well. And I got a lot of other people in my corner too that watch on Fans Choice Weekly. You know, JD, he kind of texts me here and there and says, hey, try this or hey, try that. And that helps too. Wow, that's some great insight then. You've got it coming from all, all different angles. Um, so talk about the confidence boost. You sound so happy right now. Sound like you've got some confidence under your belt. So talk about the confidence boost you do have at this point, being a little ahead in the points by, by one, but you are in the lead of the points at this point, and you just sound like you feel really good and assured of your team and your setup. Yeah, I mean, as soon as I jumped on board with them, I didn't really have to worry about a whole lot because I knew I had the fitness there. I've been working so hard all winter, and I'm confident with that, and my riding's really good, and just now I don't have to worry about the bike so much, so that helps a lot, but I just, all day, all week, I work so, so hard to be where I am right now, and I'm just, yeah, it's just, it pays off, it feels good, you know, I've been working so hard all winter, all my my whole racing career really to be where I'm at now you know I can just kind of keep doing what I'm doing just nice and smooth and I'm getting good finishes in the points lead and it's awesome I'm just real happy you look really happy it shows uh, you mentioned on the podium that without team 95 training or the training you've been doing with team 95 rather you wouldn't be here so elaborate on that what kind of training have you been doing with who give the fans a little idea yeah, you know, I've been uh, in Kentucky for a few years now, kind of living here at the Gillum House with J.D. Beach, Hayden Gillum, and a few others time to time. You know, we every day me and J.D. are going on the bicycles, running, working out, doing something, and that helps me a lot. You know, he's very obviously talented in road racing and dirt track, and he's got a great mentality for just being consistent with working out every day and training hard. It works for him, and it, I just kind of follow along, and it helps me out. Like Saturday, you know, I'm guessing a lot of those kids were getting pretty tired at the end of the race, but I'm, I was just plugging along up front. Seems to be working for you, that's for sure. Um, so talk about, uh, we know obviously everybody's still grieving the loss of Nikki Hayden, um, but you were fortunate enough, and one of the very few who was fortunate enough for that matter, to spend time with him and be able to train with him. Can you uh, talk about that to any extent for us? Yeah, you know, it's uh, kind of weird because two weeks before I went to Arizona, or actually the week before I went to Arizona, um, Nikki, we were at JD's new place, and Nikki called us, and he's like, hey, I don't know where it's at. And he's like, Colby, go pick him up. He's on the side of the, go get him. He's down by the side of the road. So I was sitting there waiting for Nikki, and then, you know, we all rode. It just felt normal. You know, that's what we did. And for such a, this is such a tragedy to have that happen, and I just, I'm still in absolute disbelief, but... Nikki, man, he was such a, like when I, uh, he was just such a great guy. I'd always tell people that Nikki could easily come in at dirt track at any given time, and either battle up front or go for that Grand National win. He was just such a talent on a motorcycle and just an all around great guy and great person. He was, and it's obviously a major loss for everybody, but you were able to take away, I'm sure, some of the most important and most influential parts of him uh, just in the time spent with him. So that's something to be very happy about. Uh, but we did want to get you on, Colby. Like I said, we've been waiting all season to get you on, waiting for the perfect moment. I think leading the points lead is that perfect opportunity to have you on. So we wanted to get you on, congratulate you, and wish you luck for the rest of your season, especially going into this weekend coming up. And like I said, can t uh, this Red Mile is new for everybody. Is there anything at all that you do know about this track or know to expect here? No, no clue. I've heard 180 both ways. People are like, oh, it's hard pack. And some people are like, no, nah, it's going to be loose. And I don't know. I'm just going to show up Friday, kind of take a peek at it real quick, and then we'll go from there. But I'm not worried. I'm so confident right now. I feel so good. We rode yesterday, and I was just plugging along lap after lap, and I felt amazing. So I'm just going to roll with it. There you go. That sounds like a good plan, Colby. I got one last question for you. Super serious. Um, it's obvious. Uh, why people call you Flying Tomato, but did you give yourself that name or was there somebody in particular that gave it to you? No, it, it was a well beverage fan in the stands that yelled it out one day after I won my first pro race, so it stuck. It's very fitting to say the least for obvious reasons, the red and you're flying. Right now you're on top of the points, Colby. We want to wish you the best luck for the rest of the season. We'll be watching you on Fans Choice this weekend. Thank you guys for having me on today. It means a lot. Absolutely. We look forward to covering you the rest of the season. It's Colby Carlisle. Follow him on Instagram, The Flying Tomato. And we'll be right back after this commercial break. Thanks, Colby. Thank you, guys. When only the highest level of quality and performance will do, it's TAW Performance. As the exclusive North American distributor for brands such as Brembo, Litec, and Marchesini, TAW Performance is globally trusted as the source for premium motorcycle parts. Kappa tire warmers for roto brake pads and Scorpion exhausts are reserved for motorcycle riders who want the best and will never settle for inferior products. 
These riders choose the trusted brands used in MotoGP, World Superbike, and Moto America. These exotic performance parts are now available on TAWPerformance.com. motorcycle great rates for great rides thanks so much for tuning in and thanks to our guest colby carlisle for calling in and congrats on taking the points lead we'll have more for you all season including your favorite racers fast products moto american american flat track coverage don't forget to join the over 10,000 others and follow us on facebook instagram and twitter or subscribe to our youtube channel join our newsletter and get this show and more straight to your inbox each saturday we look forward to a great season with you and for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion. We look forward to a great season with you and for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here. It's here. Don't forget to jump. Whatever I just said, don't forget. Don't forget it.